Hi and welcome to this DCP Web Windows 10 Tips and Tricks tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for Windows 10 that I use on a frequent basis and the first tip is to do with this taskbar at the bottom. So here you can see the taskbar I'm going to right click on the taskbar and then go to taskbar settings and normally in here in desktop view, desktop mode I set to automatically hide taskbar in desktop mode. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to close it and whenever I move my mouse cursor to the bottom the taskbar will show here and when I move away it will close I use that option because it gives me a bit more space on the screen so if I were to open up the web browser and let's go to a website so here you can see I've got a bit more screen a bit more visuals down here rather than having the taskbar permanently showing all the time Another quick tip is when you're browsing a web page, if you want to see more of the web page, you can actually just press the F11 key on your keyboard, this key here. So when I'm looking at a web page, if I press F11, it will expand the screen and now I can see even more of the web page itself. And I like to browse websites like this, I can just see you more and it just works better for me. And you can hide that or undo that by pressing F11 again. In this next tip, I'm going to show you how to organize multiple windows on your desktop. So quite often, I'll have multiple windows open. So let's say, for example, I have LibreOffice Calc. So I'm doing some spreadsheet work and I'm writing some content. So I might have LibreOffice Writer open as well. So now I've got two documents open and I may have my web browser open and I might be looking at a website. Let's just say Yahoo Finance, for example. So now I've got three different websites or three different applications open, let's say. And I want to be able to see all three of those applications at the same time. So to do this, I need to rearrange the windows. And I'm going to do that by using the Windows key and the arrow keys here. So I hold down the Windows key on my keyboard and I use the left, up, down and right arrows to organize the windows. So let's try that now. So I'm on Yahoo Finance. I'm going to hold down the Windows key and press the left arrow. And that's going to put Yahoo Finance taking up 50% of the left side of the screen. So with the Word document or the LibreOffice Writer document, I'm going to hold down the Windows key and press the right arrow. Now that will take up 50% of this side. So now I can maybe write some content on this side and also be browsing about information that I'm looking for. The other thing I can do is hold down the Windows key and make sure I've clicked on LibreOffice Writer and then press the up arrow key. And that will make LibreOffice Libre Office Writer take up 25% of the screen. And then I can click on the spreadsheet down here, hold down the Windows key, press the right arrow, and then press the down arrow. And now I've got the spreadsheet here as well. So now I'm able to work on all three of these documents, browse the internet, write some content, and update my spreadsheet all at the same time. In theory, we can have a fourth window. So we could click on the browser here, hold down the Windows key and press the up arrow and now we've got a space here for another document and that could have been um, anything, it can just be an image for example like this image. So now we've got four different documents open and we can access each document quite easily. So I hope you find that tip useful, I use that quite often when I'm working on projects and I need to look at multiple documents all at the same time and that helps me a lot. In this next tip, I'm going to show you how to customize some of the colors on your Windows 10 computer. So if you right click on the desktop and go to personalize, you can click on colors here. Now you can change the colors and some of the design uh, color themes by simply selecting some options here. So if I were to click on this yellow, you can see up here it's giving an example like the bars will be yellow and this section over here will be yellow. So if I go to Windows and click here, you can see all the icons are yellow. You can click a different color if you don't like yellow. Let's try blue. And you can see they're all blue now. Normally I stick with like this gray color down here. I kind of like it nice and simple like this. And that's the color I normally select. If you scroll down the page a bit more, you can actually pick your own custom color. So you can pick a very specific color that you like. And as you scroll down further, there's an option for transparency. So if I move this window over, you can see the sun shining here. 
if I move the window over there you can see it's transparent and it's showing through so if I turn it off it will be a solid color if I turn it on it will be transparent so I kind of like the transparency effect it looks quite good there's a few other options here and if I were to select this yellow color again or orange when I move down you can see it's like a yellowy sort of orange color here if I untick this option it will always be the standard default color if I tick it it will inherit that color and if I set it to grey then it will just be this default grey sort of color which is what I prefer if I open up the web browser you can see this title bar or the the main bar across the top here when I select a color it will change color to that specific option I've selected if I click on it it will be a darker color if I click off it will be a lighter color and again normally I just use a default grey sort of color so those are all the different color options I normally use there's one other option here where you can select a light background or a dark background normally I leave it on light or dark so should I say because uh, it's a bit easier on the eye so I select the dark option here in this final tip I'm going to show you how to customize the background image here and also how to customize your lock screen image so when you load and log into Windows first of all you've got to type in a password and you see a background image there and we can manipulate that and this desktop if you right click and go to personalize you can go to the background option here and in here you can do various things I've made some images already so you can see these different images here that I've created for my desktop and you can simply create your own image and browse and then select that particular file so if I were to click browse here I can go to my desktop I've got this folder called wallpapers and I can pick a specific image and choose that image and then that will be used for my desktop background you can also click here and go to slideshow and when you go to slideshow if you click browse you need to set you need to basically create a folder or save a set of images in a directory which you want to rotate as your background image so when I click browse I'll navigate to that particular folder and then choose that folder and then I can set it to change images every one minute or every 10 minutes depending on what you feel like so you can see the images changing in the background and I also set it to shuffle and to fill the whole screen so that's basically how you can customize your desktop background images I normally use it a standard picture and then maybe once a day when I turn my computer on I'll change that picture rather than it rotating but it's up to you you can also go to the lock screen and you can pick a picture here as well so I might pick something different let's say this example so the next time I log into my computer I will see this background uh, on the login screen and you remember you see the time and the date there and you'll see the logins here and that's what I'll see the next time and you can also set a slideshow and do a similar process so I hope you find that useful and that's how you can customize your desktop and also your lock screen there's various other options here I might go through some of those in more detail in another tutorial so I hope you find these tips and tricks for Windows 10 tutorial useful this is the first part and I'll be making more tutorials like this explaining some of the shortcuts and tips for Windows 10. Okay, I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.